Muslims uh, agree currently on what's the Quran, what they what they believe is the canon Quran. However, um, where is this belief from? Huh? Is this belief only decided today, um, five years ago, by the United Muslims of um, no, the world? It's from a long time. How long? Um, was your first? It was the first consolidation. Was after what's his name? I'm so sorry. Part of it is because I don't speak Arabic, and I and it's very difficult for me to remember Arabic words and names. Um, so I don't know remember the name, but I know it's over a thousand years. This this belief is the collective consensus of all the Muslims around the world. There is only one Quran that the Prophet ﷺ left behind, and this Quran has been read, is read, being read all over the world by the Muslims. So even though there might be slight differences because the Quran was transmitted by the Prophet from God in multiple readings. So to, to give an example, Maliki Yomiddin and Maliki Yomiddin. There's a difference. But these, both of the differences are from God. Muslims all alike agree on that. So when we say there's only one Quran and you say there's multiple versions of the Quran, you're going, you'll be going against the consensus of the Muslim body of general Muslims, scholarly Muslims, consensus all along the history from day one to today. Yes, right? I understand that. So. Um, sir, I, I, my problem is not with Muslims. My problem is not with the Islamic nation. My problem is not with you. Is it with my, Islam and the Quran? My problem is with the accuracy of the Quran when it comes to history. Let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So the Quran claims it's a revelation from God. Yes. The same God that revealed to Moses the prophet, Jesus the prophet, and other prophets. Peace be upon them all. Yes. So the Quran claims that it's the same God that has revealed revelations before and has now revealed the final revelation to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So when you want to talk about accuracy, what do you have in mind that the Quran is inaccurate about? Well, um, it, it uh, says that the war um, reclaiming Saudi Arabia when he was or uh, Mecca when he was not Mecca. Oh my goodness, um, the cube, the the Kaaba. The Kaaba. Yes. I'm... What does the Quran say about it? Yes. Um, I believe the Quran says that it was a that it was a war of, that it was a war of defense to reclaim to reclaim it for the one God. Correct. And Please carry on anyway. I don't know why it says that. So. Okay. Um, so well, please start. So, so what, what exactly is it? You know much more about no, 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 no. Um, As we expect, Muslims should know about the Quran. Christians should know about the Bible. Okay. This is a given thing. It should be right. Yeah. Otherwise, what what kind of believers are we if we don't know the basics of our of our religion of our scripture? So what an example of inaccuracy is it that you were trying to According, put forward? What, what I was able to read from uh, historians and archaeologists was that the, the wars that were enacted by Muhammad um, were, were very violent and that they and that although he was a leader of a nation and necessi can't necessarily be blamed for violence, he did have a war of conquest and that is it is it is contradictory with what it claims in the Quran. And so I was. I How is it contradictory in the Quran? The Quran says that it was a war of peace, and that and where does it say that? Nations... It doesn't say anywhere in the Quran. This is a war. This is a war of peace. Okay, then I am wrong. Sure. So let's take about another example of inaccuracies that you may have in mind. That, because if something has convinced you away from Islam, there has to be really issues which were really doubtful, and then you were convinced away from it to something else. Right. So, um, okay. um, some other examples. Uh, one of the arguments for the validity of the Quran was uh, was scientific scientific examples of of, an, uh, of, of uh, knowledge that couldn't have been known at that time, but it, since it had been revealed from God, um, then it must be. Uh, divinely inspired knowledge and must not come from man because man couldn't have known that particular scientific fact. Is that that's that's a that's a common argument for the validity of a text being divine? Correct? Well, this is an argument a lot of Muslims um, make. Yes. Yeah, but that, um, is lots that, of Christians make. Is that, is that what the Quran says though? Um, no. The, well, I, I'm, I'm getting to that. The Quran makes a claim about uh, the nature of conception and where um, and where. Uh, are you familiar with this? I, I, uh, this argument for the validity of the Quran is that uh, in. Surah number 23. Is it? Thank you. Um, Surah al Yes. Um, uh, there is a description. <laughs> okay. Can I? Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, I'm a part of a class, and I and 
and I have a limited amount of time here. Everyone else left. Take your time. It's very enjoying discussion. We're hanging with you. They will stay a little bit longer. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. They will stay longer because it's an interesting discussion. Yes. Um. And I was exam and I was I rejoiced in that argument because I think that that's very convincing. Um. But uh, when I read it for myself, uh, and, and I gotta admit, I had to translate it to English. No problem. Um, and uh, but I didn't find that that particular uh, that particular argument convincing. What was the the, um, the argument that the Quran had pre biological knowledge of the nature biological nature of conception and birth of where sperm comes from. It said sperm comes from somewhere uh, in the spine rather. You know what I mean? Um, uh, no, it doesn't. Um, anyway, so I do know what I'm. Yeah. So so this is an argument, and Nabil Quraish made a video. I I, I used to watch his as well. Um, Poor fellow. Who made a video? Nabil Quraish once made a video on this issue about the very issues about sperm. I, 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 yeah, yeah. So you haven't you haven't probably read uh, or looked I, at I, all. I've read I've read yeah. his essays, but sure, I have sure, not sure. watched his video. Um, unfortunately, for, even as a medical doctor, I mean, he should have realized the Quran doesn't make that argument. Um, so what the Quran says is not like the sperm comes from between the backbone and the ribs. It talks about how the two arguments are made, how man emanates from these two places. So when you look at the let me simplify it. When you look at during birth, the child in the, the, the abdomen or the womb of, of the mother is actually in between, exactly in between these two structural places. Because when you have a, like a cylinder, we our reference point are, if you have a cylinder, what's our reference point? It's like from this perspective, from the center. The center and yeah, then the radius. Yeah. No, no, no. From front to back, from this an angle. Oh, the diameter. Okay. No, no, no. The front to the back, anterior and posterior. In medical terms, this is what we would use to say this is anterior to this organ, posterior to this organ, in front of or in back of, so that in a cylinder you can pinpoint this its position. Okay. So the baby indeed comes from between the backbone and the ribs because that's where it's coming from, anterior and posterior. So the Quran hasn't made any scientific error of any kind or any sort. Um, and what it does in the beginning, it does show something very interesting that this sperm, actually it doesn't talk about sperm only, it talks about uh, which is a gushing fluid, which is self-emitting. And what we know now within this gushing fluid, this sperm is self-motile. So that's something that you have to say the Greeks and the Romans and the known, Hindus right. would not have known. So you would say that this is something interesting because the in Arabic, I'm not going to go into the grammar, but very simply the saying, you would have normally said ma'un madfuq. Yeah, ma'un madfuq. But the Quran says... In English that means something very yeah, different. But, but, yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> but it says ma'un dafiq, means the, the water itself is doing it itself motion, self emitting motion. So not only this is something that we don't have known, and it's very precise today, yeah. and there is no error in the description of the Quran when it comes to the birth of uh, in the child. So, um, have you heard of a person called Jonathan McClatchy? No, I have not. Okay. He came here again, again, now doing a PhD of some kind. Um, yeah. I very much wanted to discuss this because it's interesting to have a discussion with someone who, who are a man or woman of knowledge in that very field. Like if Nabil Qureshi was well today, I would have had the same discussion with him yeah. rather than someone who's not in the medical field. Could, right? you, could you actually, um, um, could you so, give me the names of, I, I, I'd like to do, I have to leave, but I'd like to do further research on this. And you and you were saying no, what, what, a lot of, sure sure um, we will we will towards the end but I want to know what other things that intellectually really led, led you away so what are the things that you found in the Quran that is really not quite right um, well, yeah, because you mentioned remember a lot of points so I want to pick from those points and tell me okay like okay, I mentioned this this is why unfortunately because what I will give you an argument and then I believe that you're and then it will be your turn to um, to defend to defend against the argument but Unfortunately, I have to go. And so rather than give you another argument... No, 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 another argument. The same arguments that you've made already. Okay. Just because I don't want to go through every single one of them and I don't remember all of them because my memory isn't that good. That's why I use okay. notepad like yourself exactly. Yeah. Um, so yes. remind yourself and say what are the things that you said that was really 
really, you know, convinced you out of Islam? Um, okay, um, Islam uh, is uh, Swat is a works based gospel. Islam is? A works based salvation. Not really. Um, the fact that you, uh, that in order to go to heaven, that it is your deeds and it is your following of the law that determines whether or not you are a good person. Actually, and it believes that people can be made good if they do good deeds. Okay. Do you know, do you know, just to understand the Islamic position on this? Yes, sir, I do want to understand. No, I, want to, I want to, no, 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 no. my I sister. Have, I have to, I have to leave. You will leave, sorry. but I want to respond to this very quickly. Because there's a statement of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, I'm sorry, we're going to be late. But can I, I make this response in one minute? I can't, I one minute. can't start it, I'm sorry. Just one minute. And the, okay, the response is this anyway. The companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked about, you know, you know, how are we going to, do we go to paradise no. with our deeds? He says, no. He says, uh, this paraphrasing, not even you, he says, no, not even me. Unless Allah showers his grace on me, his mercy and grace on me. So so we go to paradise through the fadl of Allah, from the grace of Allah, uh, from the mercy of Allah, not because of our deeds. Yes. So this is again total misconception by our Christian um, uh, friends in humanity. Um, unfortunately, they have to go. But uh, if we did continue, you'd have realized point by point, every single uh, reasons they may have had against Islam and accepting Islam are actually very weak and not even valid at all. But obviously now I'm just speaking to myself, there's no point in it further to continue. James says the same, the faith without deeds is useless.